So here we have an issue with a compression release. You can see this is pull start Briggs and Stratton engine. It says Briggs and Stratton somewhere. And uh, when the customer went to pull it, it was almost impossible. Look at, look at this guy here. This is, a, this is an in shape guy. Just can't even pull it. Okay. So what they did, they relied on the electric starter over here. And the electric starter, believe it or not, even on one of these engines, relies on the compression release. So a lot of people don't realize that these engines, if they didn't have a compression release, would be near impossible to start. So the compression release on a Briggs & Stratton engine will actually bump the exhaust valve. So what we want to see here is this pushing down just that little bit like that when it hits the compression, just to bleed off a little bit of the compression. So we weren't sure if this was broken, so why don't you go ahead and pull it over again for me. What we want to see is this bumping. There it is. Is that the compression? You saw both valves open. And this is not doing anything like it should be. So we know that the compression release is broken. That's in the block. A lot of people don't understand how the compression release actually works. So here we go right here, and you can see this weight. So what's actually going to happen is when the, the lobe is on the compression stroke, compression portion of the stroke, this will actually bump the lifter on the exhaust side. So this sits in the motor like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to just hit that cam follower, if you will, lifter, if you want to call it that. And uh, it's just going to bleed off that little bit of compression to help you get momentum and get the engine started. Now, the way this works, it has a little return spring on it, and it actually pulls out of the way once the engine starts spinning faster. And then there's no compression release. So that's how this thing works. So I'm expecting when we pull this apart, we're going to see an issue here. Otherwise, we would see this portion of the camshaft lifting up the push rod right here, which we're not seeing. Now, if I saw way too much valve lash here, like 35 or 40 thousandths of an inch, which this doesn't have, that might actually be what was causing the problem. But instead, I think the problem is the camshaft itself.